Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. I am Ruth Norton with Ruth Stamping Corner and I have a really adorable little project to share with you guys today. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. We're going to use some new stamps, new dyes, new colors, um, new accessories. I, it is... It is really cute. I'm going to show you guys in just a second what we're going to make. Um, but before we get to our project, I do want to go over just a few things. Um, this Saturday is April 10th, which is the last day to subscribe for this month's Paper Pumpkin. So if you want this um, Paper Pumpkin kit, it's called So Cool This Month. It creates 12 fun, fresh-shaped cards, um, fun-shaped cards. Um, it's going to be so cute. I cannot wait. So... If you want this month's kit, you have to subscribe by Saturday. Saturday is the last day to subscribe. So make sure you head to that link in the video description and subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. Okay, also happening this weekend is my deadline for April's card crate. Now, the cards this month are featuring the Pretty Perennials bundle. They are gorgeous cards. They're kind of like over-the-top cards. I'm going to give you guys a quick look. and We're going to put them away. They're so cute, though. Um, they are over-the-top cards. They are gorgeous cards. If you want this month's card crate, make sure you RSVP for that by Sunday the 11th. Um, card crate is $35. You get the supplies for all of those cards. For five cards, you get $20 in product, and it all ships for free. It's a fantastic deal at $35. So make sure you head to the, my um, website with, or my blog that talks about card crate, especially this month. And the last day to RSVP with payment is Sunday the 11th. And then I'll order everything on Monday and get it all out to you as soon as it gets to me. All right, you guys, look what I have. It is so beautiful. Now, I can't show you anything on the inside. Can't show you any of the inside pages. Can't do anything like that, but you can look at the cover. So um, just check out that amazing cover. So um, this is coming soon. This is coming May 4th. And I'm going to show you guys a few things that are brand new in it. I'm not going to go through my entire pre-order. That, um, that would take a long time. Oh, well, it would take a fair amount of time. We'll say that. But we are going to talk about all the brand new ink colors. And I'm going to show you guys a couple new stamp sets, ones that we're using. Okay, so let's look at the ink colors. I'm going to put the cardstock away for just a second. But let's look at the ink colors. So we have Polished Pink. We have Soft Succulent. This is my absolute favorite. I think this is my absolute favorite favorite. Um, we have Pale Papaya. These two, I think, are my favorite. Um, Fresh Freesia and Evening Evergreen. So these are our five new in colors. They are gorgeous. Every single one of these colors has stamp and blends to coordinate with them. Um, I've already put them all away, so I let's see. We have the some of these colors. I'm not gonna be able to get out. I have other stuff in front of them. Here is the the Fresh Freesia, the polished pink, the soft succulent. Is that this one? Yeah. Soft succulent, um, pale papaya, and evening evergreen. So every single one of them has coordinating Stampin' Blends, which I love. I love coloring these with these, and these colors are just gorgeous. So you'll have to let me know what colors you love, what are your favorites, and yeah, let me know because I absolutely love these colors. Um, it seems like these colors are more, I don't know where to put my markers. I can't put them away right now. So just give me a second. I'm going to put them down somewhere. My desk is full. Um, it seems like these colors, um, people either love them or they don't like them. So I love them. I think they're going to be gorgeous. So these are the colors. So let's go into some kind of some color comparison real quick. So let's start with our pinks. So we have polished pink. And so I have here to compare. This is our polished pink. It's gorgeous. Um, so here is just a quick little comparison. We have Flirty Flamingo and Melon Mambo. So you see polished pink just kind of falls right in the middle of that. The um, Magenta Madness looks almost purple with the polished pink. But um, I love Melon Mambo and polished pink together. I think that is a gorgeous color combination. And the Flirty Flamingo is, is really, it's a good color to throw in there. It makes it almost give the Flirty Flamingo an orange tone. But I love this polished pink it's gorgeous okay let's look at another one so my favorite soft succulent so to compare with soft succulent i have just jade and mint macaron so you can see it kind of falls in the middle of those 
um, it pairs really well with Just Jade, I think. Um, it does have more of a gray undertone than Just Jade, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous color, the Soft Succulent. I just, I love it. You're going to see this used a ton, you guys. I promise. Um, this and the Pale Papaya, which is next, Pale Papaya. So let's look at that one. So this is our Pale Papaya, and this is, oh my tags upside down. This is Mango Melody and Pumpkin Pie. Now, I love this with Pumpkin Pie. I think this is a fantastic, like, two-step stamping color combo. Um, Mango Melody, I think it goes really well, too, but um, Pumpkin Pie, I think, is it's just a fantastic lighter version. Okay, a couple more. We have Fresh Freesia. Now, I know a lot of people were like, it looks a lot like Purple Posy, but you guys, it's a lot darker than Purple Posy. Look at these two together. Purple Posy is so much lighter. We have Fresh Freesia, and then this is Highland Heather. So you can see where it falls in there. It's like a lilac color almost. Well, the Purple Posy was a very, very light purple. Um, this is really more of a lilac color, which I really like. Okay, like a plum color, maybe. All right, and the last one is... The Evening Evergreen. And so I have Mossy Meadow and Shaded Spruce to bring it in with this. And I do like it with Shaded Spruce. I think it's a, a nice um, darker version of that. But it also just goes really well with that soft succulent. You can pair it well with that. So those are our five new in colors. They are fantastic. I love them. I have been having so much fun playing with them. Um, I have some projects coming up in the next few weeks that you guys will see. But... I have loved them so much. So let's look at just a couple of the of the stamp sets and all the bundles that we're going to be using today. So the first one is probably one of my favorites. This is the Pansy Patch Bundle. Look at these amazing dies. So the dies will not only cut out the little pansies, they're um, like three-step stamping. You build them up. Sorry, I know my light keeps getting in the way that ring light is a the big reflection but the dies will also create lots of detailed pansies so I have a little plate full of little samples for you guys so these are the the larger dies and we're actually going to use this um stamp set and dies later and then the smaller ones so you can see the gorgeous combination you get with these and then this is that those detailed dies in here which I'm trying to get off that glare so this one this one but you can see just how gorgeous and how detailed those dies are with this little pansy bundle. So it's a fantastic bundle. This is a really good one. The leaves, these are the, the leaves and the die cuts. And then there's also little stamped leaves too that you can um, stamp and die cut with those dies too. So this is a fantastic bundle. I just really love this one. I've ha been having some fun playing with it. I didn't know a whole lot about pansies, so I had to do some research what they look like how you're supposed to stamp them, but it is just a really, really fun bundle. We're going to use this one today. All right, the other bundle that I just wanted to showcase today, and we're going to, I'll show you everything eventually, don't worry, but um, this bundle is another one we're using today. Now, we're not using the stamp set. The stamps um, are amazing. They're two-step stamping here. I love the little sketchy lines of them. I love the greetings, but the real winner of this bundle is these dies. Look at these amazing dies. Look at how big they are. We are using this one today. This one is like the full size of a card front. Um, do I have a card handy? <laughs> Let me see. Do I have a card handy? So this is um, this is the size of a card. That's how big this die is. It is incredible, you guys. This is definitely one of my absolute favorite must-have bundles, these shapes. Are incredible. They all have their own little detail. I'm going to leave this one out because we're going to use it. Um, but they're stitching on some of them. This one has a beautiful like eyelet border. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So if there was one thing I said you had to get, it's these dies for sure. And the colors, of course. Okay, so do you guys want to see what we're making? So that was just a quick little sneak peek of some of what I got. So this is what we are going to make. We're actually going to make a box. We're going to turn this die into this beautiful little box. Now there's nothing in this I just kind of came up with this yesterday, but it could definitely hold a lot of things. You could um, throw lots of little candies in there. You can do really a lot of things in here. It's really cute, isn't it? It's so cute. And that die is just amazing. It just leaves the, the best little border edge on there. So we're going to stamp some flowers. We're actually going to use different colors than, um, 
than these examples. This is that fresh freesia and I used rich raspberry for the center. We're gonna make um, another one with that pale papaya, but we're also gonna use the polished pink for one of our little pansies. So let's get to all of our stamping first and then we'll bring the, the cut and emboss machine out. We'll do all of that together. Okay, so let me pull out, da, da, da. So I just have a scrap piece of white. We're gonna do all of our stamping on this. Now this is a photopolymer stamp set. So I'm gonna pull out my um, stamp and pierce mat. This is just gonna give me a little bit of extra cushion there. Okay, so <laughs> I know, okay, I'm sorry. So yeah, there's nothing in the box. Normally I design a box around something, but I really wanted to see if it would work with this die. I really want to see if I can make a box with this die. And I just didn't have anything on hand, but you could fit a lot of stuff in there, I promise. There's probably lots of little candies I have lying around that you can fit in there. Um, okay, so let's get started with our stamping. So we're actually gonna start with our, our polished pink. So I'm gonna pull that out. We're gonna make a smaller pansy with this one. So, and I'm actually gonna pull in some scrap paper because we're gonna be doing a little bit of stamping off so for the stamps, we're going to use that pansy patch. And so I'm starting with, starting with my smaller ones. Let me get out all my small pieces for that one. So I'm using these three down here. These are my, the three that I'm using for um, my pansy. So let's start with, I'm actually going to start with my melon mambo. Let me pull that out. We're going to start with our darker color because I just find that it's easier to stamp the darker color first. So I'm move my scrap paper out of the way. I'm gonna stamp my darker color here. And this is the Melon Mambo, it's so pretty. All right, and then I'm gonna come in with my um, polished pink. I'm gonna stamp that off on scratch paper. I don't want it so bright because we are gonna go over it with one more layer and then just gonna line that up. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. All right, now we're gonna come in with that flower center. We're gonna go back to that polished pink. This time we're not stamping off. We're just gonna stamp that right over. And that's gonna give us three gorgeous shades of that, of, of pink for that pansy. Isn't that adorable? Okay, so I'm gonna put those aside. So that was polished pink and melon mambo. Gorgeous colors together. All right, now we're gonna use our pale papaya and I'm gonna pull in some pumpkin pie with this. We're gonna stamp it the same way. We're gonna use our larger pansy this time. So there's my pumpkin pie my pale papaya so this time I have the three larger images that kind of coordinate so we have the detail one you can see I've been using this a lot it's already kind of stained pink the detail one the more solid one and then the center one so again we're gonna start with the the darker one and actually in this case I'm gonna use the, the pale papaya for this so we're a detailed image we're gonna stamp that just straight on we're not gonna stamp it off because isn't that a gorgeous color I love that. Years ago, when I first signed on, we had a color called Apricot Appeal. And that is what this color reminds me of. And that was one of my favorite colors. So that, I think, is why I like this so much. So you'll see I stamped this off on our scrap paper. And then this is just going to go right over. So you're going to get that same look. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a little light. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up that well. But it is gorgeous. And then with our pumpkin pie, I'm going to come in with the with that pansy center and just kind of stamp that in the middle. And there we go, isn't that pretty? I love it, so pretty. I think my pumpkin pie might need to be re-inked, but that's okay. I think it's gorgeous as these flowers are gonna work perfectly. All right, I'm gonna move that out of the way for now and we're gonna stamp a couple of leaves and for that, we're gonna pull in both of our greens from our end colors. So we have soft succulent and the evening evergreens. So we're gonna start with soft, su soft succulent. And I'm just going to stamp them both. I have them both on one block. And I'm just going to stamp them both just like that. Look at that amazing detail. So you get light and dark shades. And that's just with our soft succulent. And then our evening evergreen. Let me put this away. I have a pile of stamps. Okay. Our evening evergreen, we're just going to come over and we're going to just lay those right on top. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? So oh, pretty, 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 oh, so pretty. Anyway, so gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna leave this out for just a second. I'm gonna pull in, I have a piece of white that is, where's my, where's my notes? I lost my notes. The white is 
three and one quarter by one and three quarters. And this is going to go on the top of our box. So this is going to be our piece that goes right on the top. So I do want to stamp our greeting before we, before we put our inks away. This is a greeting from that stamp set, from that pansy patch stamp set. The little things you do make such a big difference. So really cute. All right, I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to move all of my inky stamps out of the way. And we are going to pull in one more stamp. This is the the memento one now for my for these i actually use the die there's a little tiny like teardrop die and i use these for that but you'll notice that that die actually works better for this so there is a little tiny stamp for the center of the flowers and so we're going to try it out with this one so that is just going to go i'm just going to do it in black that's just going to go in the middle of both of these so just like that okay beautiful so we're going to die cut these and we're also going to cut our gorgeous scallop piece okay so we put that away let me get all our die cut pieces so we're going to die cut this i'm going to cut that scallop piece out of our polished pink so let me get all of our dies out get our cut and emboss machine out this one we got to use the big one because that scallop die is pretty big it will not fit in the mini so make sure you have your big one on hand let me grab my plates I can move all my cardstock out of the way. I have a couple of classes that I'm prepping for right now, so my desk is just covered in stuff. So instead of cleaning my desk, I was like, oh, I'll just do Facebook Live with everything on my desk. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's just becoming a bit of a of a disaster working in six inch space. Okay, now I'm gonna die cut this. So I have a my polished pink is just a quarter sheet of cardstock. It might actually be more like five and three quarters. But I just have a quarter sheet of cardstock here, and I'm putting this die in at an angle. If you put it in straight, you're going to really struggle trying to get it through. You put it in at an angle, and that'll really help you out. And that's a good rule of thumb for, for any um, rectangle or square object or die. The stitched rectangles work the same way. The um, scalloped rectangles from the Stitch So Sweetly dies work the same way. If you put it in at an angle, it just cuts so much better. All right, so let's look at this. Look at these, these will just pop right out. Look at that amazing die cut. Isn't that phenomenal? Okay, so we have all our little scraps here, but I'm not gonna worry about those right now. I'm just gonna kinda get them off our plate and we'll die cut all of our little pansies and then we'll worry about where to put these later. Probably they're just gonna end up on the floor. <laughs> all right. Let's bring in our, our piece of die cut, and I need the rest of my dies. Where did my dies go? I didn't even get these dies out. Okay, so this is our leaf die for that. We have our small little pansy. We have our bigger pansy, and our other leaf. Where's that? Are the, this one right here? All right, so I am going to use some post-it tape just to hold these down because I don't want them moving on me. Bear with me for just a second. And while I get these all down, let me tell you about my um, special this month. When you shop using my host code, you'll see my host code when I move my die cutting machine. It's right on my mat or it's in the video description. And this month, um, well, every month when you place an order in my online store, I send you a PDF with three exclusive projects. Those projects do not get shared on my blog. They are only exclusive for people who place orders in my online store or for my team. I do share that um, PDF with my team. Now this month, if you place an order for um, $50 or more in my online store using the host code, you're also gonna get a make and take kit for those three projects. So not only will you get the PDF, but you're also gonna get a bonus of three projects. So um, Kay's Cards is asking why that is. Now I'm guessing you're asking about putting the die in at an angle. Um, I honestly don't know the science behind that. I, I'm not sure the exact science on that. I just know that it works better. Um, you have to, I, the what, analogy I've heard before is that if you run it through um, with it straight, it's kind of like hitting a speed bump. You just, your machine can do it. It's just going to take a little bit of extra pressure, a little bit of extra work. Um, however, if you go over it at an angle, that pressure is going to be able to more evenly distribute, um, letting you run it through a little easier. So um, I have run it through both ways. I have run it through completely straight and it was 
it was it's like going over a speed bump essentially um and if you hit that speed bump head on you're it's going to be harder on your car so hit it kind of at an angle and your car will thank you much like um so the die cutting machine the same way so if you put it in at an angle it just goes in easier so i don't know the exact science it just works but okay all these little pink scallop scraps i'm gonna get out of the way here are our gorgeous flowers die cut isn't that cute i love these flowers okay now we're gonna work on our box so i'm actually gonna pull in my paper trimmer to do the scoring today normally i pull in my simply scored but today we're just gonna do the trimmer now what i want to do and be i wanted to use the trimmer because i can see the the exact track and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut not cut we're going to count five scallops one two three four five and we're going to do a score line after that fifth scallops one two three four five so i'm going to use my score one that's my lighter blade on my on my cutting tool here on my paper trimmer and then i'm going to scoot over two scallops and we're going to score it again okay so that's going to give me five scallops on each side and then two scallops in the middle okay like that okay now as long as we have our scoring tool out we're going to do some scoring on our actual box piece so our box is five by three and a half and we're going to score at seven eighths so i'm just going to use my measuring over here and i'm going to go through and i'm just going to score it at seven eighths on each side now this piece you could do in the in the simply scored but you know i have this out so why not so just seven eighths on all four sides and that's it that's all the scoring we are going to do some folding now we're going to burnish on these score lines now this box i did in evening evergreen and there's some new ribbon on there do you see that new pale papaya ribbon all right so we have all of our pieces scored here now all we're going to do is just do a little bit of trimming so i'm going to cut straight up on the the rectangles and then i'm just going to notch in on both sides here now the um these little squares are going to be hidden so don't worry about what that looks like they're just kind of rough chops and we're just really chopping off any excess cardstock so it doesn't hang over and it just helps our box go together a little easier so let's cut straight up and trim trim and straight up and trim and trim all right that one. okay so here's my house code so remember when you place any size order you're going to get that pdf if your order is over $50 or more this month with that host code, I'm going to mail you a make and take kit as well for those three exclusive projects. All right, I'm going to use my stamp and seal plus to adhere my box. So just a little bit of adhesive. So this is just your basic box that goes together pretty quick, pretty easily. These little tabs will fold in just like that. So this is just your standard box. Okay, one more tab, and that is it. That's our little box. Easy peasy, right? Anybody can do this. All right, now we have our, our scallop piece ready to go. This box would make a great bridal shower or baby shower invitation. You can always customize it. And so this little box is just going to get adhered right in there. And we'll have our little box. Isn't that cute? So for this, because I just want a little bit of wiggle room, just make sure I get it in the right place. I'm going to use some Tombow, some liquid glue. And this is just going to go right on the, the bottom. And either one can be the bottom. It, at this point, it doesn't matter. Just wherever you glue it, that's the bottom. And just make sure that's nice and even on all the sides. And that is it. Isn't that cute? That's our cute little box. So basically all we need to do now is decorate it and decorating it is easy because we've already done all the stamping all right i'm going to pull in some of the, the pale papaya ribbon this is woven ribbon in our pale papaya it's nice and thick it's white white edged now i'm not going to tie a bow so i don't need to leave too much ribbon but i do want to yes enough to tie a knot all right put that aside now I didn't want my little scallops to get bent down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut in. I'm going to count one, two, three, four scallops. 
and I'm just going to cut off that middle fifth scallop. And that'll leave you one, two, three, four on the other side. So we're going to do the same on the bottom. One, two, three, four. And we're just going to cut off that scallop just like that. And that will give our, our ribbon room to, to tie. And then it won't bend any of those scallops. Okay, so we're actually going to tie our little box closed because that will help us assemble the rest of it from here out. So I'm gonna tie it closed. And I'm just using a knot. You can, if you wanted to use a bow, you could absolutely use a bow. I'm just going to do a quick little knot just like that. And now we're going to stick this down. I'm going to use liquid glue just because I want it to, to really adhere down. And this, that's going to sandwich in our ribbon. So our ribbon's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to sandwich it right in. Okay, so we're gonna give that a good little press. Isn't that cute? Let me tie this one back up so we can see what we're doing here. Let's give this a quick little tie just like that. So cute, so you guys will have to tell me which one you like better. Now we're gonna stick our, our bigger pansy down. I'm just gonna adhere that down. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in the middle just so we have room to stick in our leaves. That's gonna go right on the back there. I have dimensional somewhere. I'm going to stick my polished pink one up on dimensionals. That's going to go just like that. And then we're just going to kind of slide in our leaves. Just a little bit of glue on the back. I'm just going to slide that under just like that. And this one will go up here just like that. That is our sweet little box. Isn't that cute? So you have to tell me which one you like better. Do you like the polished pink version better or the evening evergreen? I'm not sure. I really like both of these little pansies. I think I do prefer the pansies with this little teardrop die cut thing on there. <laughs> Even though I think the stamp is, is really meant to do it. So you'll have to tell me which which stamped version you like too. The little the stamped ver um, center or the die cut center. I think I really prefer that die cut center. But... It's all a preference, I think. Either way, the boxes are super, super cute. All right, guys, so that is it for me. Now, next week, I do have a schedule conflict for um, Wednesday at 3 o'clock, so join me at 2 o'clock. No, I'm sorry, join me Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Okay, <laughs> Tuesday next week at 3 o'clock, and I'll make sure to post, but I will not be live Wednesday next week. I'll be live Tuesday instead, so... Um, just make sure that you um, watch my Facebook page for, for that announcement and I'll be up just a day earlier next week because of a schedule conflict. All right, guys. So that is it for me. If you like this video, please share with your friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Remember to head to my online store, shop my um, online store with this house code. The last chance list retiring sale is still going on. If you love any of these new products and you want them right now, you can purchase a starter kit and put all of these products in your starter kit right now. Um, contact me for more details on the starter kit. It is always an amazing detail and I'd love to have you on my team. Thank you guys so much. I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.